Can everybody settle down? Everybody, uh, everybody is uh, trying to bless you this morning. Good morning, everybody. Um, it's good to welcome you all to church this morning. Um, and if you're watching online again, it's uh, good to uh, just to welcome you to the church service this morning. And when I was when I was thinking of, of how to open the service this morning, I kind of asked myself the question: What do we come to church for? And there's lots of different reasons why we come to church on a Sunday morning. And one of the uh, one of the things that we come to church for is to praise and to worship God. Yeah. Yeah, it's just one of them. There's, 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 uh, receiving the word and prayer and praise and everything else. But but praise and worship is really important for And I just want to read Psalm 150, and it says, "Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty heavens. Praise Him for His acts of power." Praise him for his suppressing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpets. Praise him with the harp and the lyre. Praise him with tambourine and dancing. Praise him with the strings and flute. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with the resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And it's that last little bit there. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. You know, God has done so much for each and every one of us that that verse or those passages, that, that passage there that I've just read to you means that every single one of us has got something to praise God for and to thank God for. So as I hand over to the worship band now, um, you know, just give God all the praise and all the glory that he deserves. You know, praise him and sing as loud as you can. Dance if you want to. It's not a problem. You can do it. As, as Mike says, you can do cartwheels if you want to do cartwheels. Because we've got so much to thank the Lord for this morning. Heavenly Father, just thank you, Lord, that we can just come to church, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that we can praise and worship you, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that we've got so much to thank you for, Lord. And I just pray right now, Lord, that as we... Praise and worship you that as we go through the service and hear your word, Lord, that Lord, you would just bless each and every one of us, Lord, that each and every one of us will just get a blessing and a touch from you, Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Oh, Anne's ready. <laughs> Have you got breath today? Yes. Praise the Lord! Come on, everyone, stand up! Stand in your 
Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness true. 
that you are beside us and you step behind us all around us that you will put us in the palm of your hand and you will never ever let us go thank you that you did all that you did to bring us back to yourself we are so grateful and we are so well because we are here. We're home in your arms, listening to your voice. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your gaze. Thank you for your face shining upon your people.
Thank you, Lord, that not only is all I am is yours, but all you are is ours. All you are is ours. You are our portion forever, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, while we're in this attitude of prayer, you know, we've been talking, those last two songs we've been talking about all his prayer in my soul. And, you know, some of us, it's easy to say all is well with my soul when it isn't. Some of us might be going through some pretty tough times. Some of us might be fine. Some of us might be going through some pretty tough times. Some of them, some of us might know people that need a touch from God. And you know, these people that are not well, that have been on the prayer chain in the last week or two, and I want to people said things as well. You know, people that aren't well and. I think it would be just good while we're in this attitude of all is well with my soul to just pray. I'm just going to do a collective prayer. I'm just going to pray into all the situations. To name names, we'd be here for ages, okay? Because there's lots and lots of different needs and things like that. But, you know, let's, let's kind of just ask God to make sure that all is well with our souls. And Lord, I just want to pray right now, Lord, that Lord, you would just move by your spirit, that you would just move by your holy name, Lord, that you would just heal people that need a healing, Lord, that you would just touch people that need a touch, that you would put your loving arms around people that just need a cuddle, that just need a hug right now, Lord. And Lord, I just pray, Lord, for those that are going through tough times, Lord, and Lord, I just pray for each and every one of them right now that you will just move by your spirit, Lord. That Lord, you can move mountains. Lord, faith, the small as a mustard seed, can move mountains. And Lord, I just pray right now that people will see a breakthrough. People will start to see a breakthrough in their situations, knowing that you're in control, Lord. Just give them, Lord, that knowledge in their hearts and their lives to know that you've got everything in control. Lord. And we just pray that, Lord, you will break through people's situations. You will break through people's sicknesses right now so that, Lord, we can say, all is well with our soul. And so I just pray and I just ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So there's lots uh, going off this morning, so I'm going to ask Rachel to uh, just come and bring uh, the notices too. There's some really important ones that Rachel is going to bring. Okay, they're all important, but... There's a couple of really important notices that we need to bring and then um, turn back to me and then we'll go into the next part of our service which is the cooking of a wedding cake, okay? So that'll be brilliant, that'll be good. Uh, the gifts can stay in because then we'll go straight into the cake and then they can go out after we've got the cake. Yeah, yeah, okay. Wonderful, good morning. So, tomorrow there is no encounter evening here. Instead, it's our annual general meeting here at 7.30. Um, if you've not received an annual report, I did send one the update this week. There are some copies at the back. If you'd prefer an email and you haven't, you've not been getting the weekly updates, please come and see me today and I'll get you signed up and we'll send that on to you. Um, also, Hearty Scotty is going to continue our warm spaces um, on a Monday and a Friday between 12 and half two. If you can help make soup or come and help even for an hour, please do let me know because we really do seem to help, especially on a Monday at the minute. Uh, life groups, Matt. Matt's going to give a brief description of what life groups is happening because I, I sometimes don't listen. <laughs> So we're restarting life groups, um, but we're not necessarily going to have a life group as you may have known it um, in the past, because sometimes those life groups can become very much inward looking, you know, like, uh, let's all share our problems. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with that, but if they don't also become outward looking to share the gospel with people in our communities, in our streets, then we're doing something wrong. Um, and so, uh, so look, there will be an element of, of you know, Bible studies and those and, 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 and 
care in those, but there'll also be a great element of outward lookingness in them, where we're actually um, looking to be evangelical in those groups. Um, and, uh, and, and so, really, it's, it's like when you do a small group like that, the best way is it's like a mini church. You know, you think of the way church was back in the, you know, described in Acts, and they met in people's homes, and, and they did church together. And, and so that's the kind of thing we're looking at in the week. It's going to be every other Tuesday um, on, the same, on the same days as the Felton um, Church Panties on the uh, second and fourth Tuesdays every month. And uh, there's going to be two more groups initially and then we'll see what the numbers are like uh, as time goes on. So, so there's going to be one in Morpeth and one from somewhere between here and Newcastle. Um, so if you, if you think geographically where do you need to sign up? And then, of course, if you live north of here, there's also the, the um, church plant on the Tuesday nights um, on the second and fourth Tuesdays at Felton as well. So um, there's a sign-up sheet at the back, and if you don't sign up, you won't hear about what's happening and where it is. So, uh, so write your name on the sheet at the back. And uh, do you want to talk about now? Yeah, well, that's it. For those who are online and not in the building, <laughs> if you would like to be part of the live group, please send us a message on Facebook or you can call me or email us and we'll put you on the list. So don't feel because you're not here, you can't come to live group. Thank you. Rachel thinks about it, which is good. Uh, Nehemiah Day is this coming Saturday. Um, and what that is, is, is a, a work morning. So it's 9.30 to 1.30. You will get lunch. So if you fancy some lunch, Come along from 9.30 in the morning. Um, again, put your names on the sheet at the back. Because if we know who's coming, we can prepare paintbrushes, we can prepare different jobs that we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing some painting, so come in old clothes. Um, we're going to be doing some sanding of walls um, for painting later at the next Nehemiah day. We're going to be putting shelves up and we're going to be doing some general tidying. If they're the kind of things you think, I can't do that, well, you could come along and help with the lunch. Just make sure you write down on the on the um, on the sheet, there's, there's going to be something for everybody to help with, and even if it's making teas for people and encouraging them and things like that. So, so it's, it's a it's a family thing for all of us to get involved in. And um, you know, the church doesn't look after itself. Um, we, as a family of believers, look after our church, and we do it with the people, and we also do it with our facilities. Okay, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next notice is from Joe. It's Joe. Uh, you may have seen um, the uh, on the church notice email about the fact that we're having a cake sale next Sunday uh, for to raise funds for Rwanda. Uh, basically, they need a tent for the children's work. Um, so, and there's always other needs like school materials and. Feeding the poor and other things. So what we'd like is the ladies in the church, if you'd like to uh, bake some cakes, bring them along, um, and then we can sell them. It's a bit like Empire, really. Um, just the ladies, because it just makes good Well, cakes. exactly. I mean, you know, <laughs> um, um, any, any other bakers, basically. Anyone who's a baker, but I tend to text with the ladies usually. So, um, so yeah, and if you could just bring them along, and we can we can sell the cakes and raise money for Pastor Francis and the church, Eden Church. Um, I just to let you know, I'm in a lot of contact with them, and the things are really going well there. Uh, they've been having conferences with students. There's a particular burden to reach the young people, and they've been seeing a lot of people come to the Lord, giving their lives to Jesus. Um, and they're very much in prayer, they're very much a praying church, which is, you know, it's, it's something what's going on, but for the sake of time, I'll stop there. <laughs> Wonderful, thanks, John. Uh, the last notice, could Mr. and Mrs. Mills stand up? Yes, it was. It was two weeks ago today, 
Um, obviously being off on the, the honeymoon and they're looking nice and tanned as you can see there. Okay. And um, what I'd like to do is because not everybody can make it into the back hall a fortnight ago, they'd just like to cook um, the wedding cake. And I'm assuming that that is going to go into the back hall. I'm assuming that everybody is going to have tea cakes. Yeah, that'll be good. Tin cake. Tin cake. That'll be good. Okay, so I'm going to know what to live. We're just going to say a few words. Okay. Well, that was pretty much it, really. But just to say, we celebrate with you. And we're so happy for you. And we pray God's blessing upon you both going forward. And uh, we'll be watching as you cut the cake. I'll have a big slice of So it's good to have uh, John McKay with us this morning. He's going to bring the word. And um, I'm sure we're going to be blessed by what uh, John has got to say to us this morning. He's going to come forward. Oh, yeah, could the children go out now, please? Sorry, I forgot about that. <laughs> Always do. Oops. <laughs> oh, they've gone on very most of them, so 
Lord, we just pray your blessing on them, Lord, right now. We just pray, Lord, that as they go into uh, the living room, Lord, Lord, you just bless them, just move by your spirit, Lord, right now. Amen. And just open their hearts, Lord, and their ears to just hear what you want to say to them, Lord. And just, Lord, as they're young, Lord, I just pray that you'll just start building them up, Lord, to know you more and more and more. And just give them that personal relationship with you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Excellent. So, I just pray for John and the land of strength. Lord, I just thank you for John. Lord, I just pray right now that, Lord, you would just move by your spirit in our hearts and lives, Lord, that, Lord, we would just feel your presence, Lord, that, Lord, just help us, Lord, to open up our eyes now, ears, Lord, to what you want to say to us, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, right now that each and every one of us, Lord, will get something from John's message this morning. So I just pray a blessing on John, Lord. I just pray, Lord, that the words he speaks to us, Lord, that, Lord, they will be from you, Lord, that, Lord, You'll just bless him, you just anoint him, Lord, right now, by your Holy Spirit, Lord. Just anoint him as he brings the word to us in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, hello, everybody. You're glad you're saved. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Isn't Jesus wonderful? Yes. Do you believe that? Yes. Amen. He's a wonderful Savior, isn't he? Yes. Yeah, well, I, I'm really privileged to be here with you this morning. I, I just love to, to preach the Word of God and to bring something from, from the Holy Spirit. And um, I preached this sermon, a bit of a denigrate, it was there a couple of weeks ago, so Martin Matt and Anna were there, so you can hear it all again. But I was John Wesley who said, a good sermon is not a good one unless it's been preached at least 20 times. That was John Wesley. But of course he used to preach three times a day, didn't he? And then he travelled around on horseback uh, from different parts, different parts of the country. And not, not all churches received him and his brother and, and what he had to say, but some did. And he became the, the father of Methodism. And um, thousands and thousands of people were born again through the ministry of John Wesley and Charles Wesley. I'm not a Methodist. But, um, hallelujah, I'm a Pentecostal, yeah. Assemblies of God, if that means anything to anybody. The, the, the most important thing is our kingdom of God, isn't that right? Yes. All one in Christ Jesus. Lots of denominations, lots of different groupings of people, but those people who love Jesus, um, they are part of the Ecclesia. Of the church of the living God. This is just a building that we worship God in. It's such a lovely building as well, isn't it? But if you weren't here this morning, what's good? What, what's the good of an empty building? We need to fill the building with people who will come to know Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. So I'm grateful for in the last few weeks that people have come to Christ here at the Wall's End and, um, and they're going on with the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Amen. So this morning I'd like to just bring a word of encouragement and exhortation to you all that uh, I'm to myself too, that we'll become fishers of men. So if you have a Bible, you'll probably come up on the screen, but Luke's Gospel chapter 5, let's start by reading Luke's Gospel chapter 5, 1 to 11, <coughs> and uh, the calling of the first disciples. One day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, with the people crowding around him and listening to the word of God, he saw at the water's edge two boats, left there by the fishermen, who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, We've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signalled their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish that was taken. 
in that we'll see it there. Um, got a few notes, a few notes. Got a few of them. <laughs> Hallelujah! I pray this morning that somebody here or some people here, all of you people here, will be blessed by the Word of God. Yeah. Amen. And yeah. uh, the Lord's purpose for His disciples in the words recorded in Matthew and Mark, and was probably addressed to them on the shore when they had beached their boats. Come and follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. We used to sing that in the Sunday school. Can I remember that list? I will make you fishers of men if you follow me. Can anybody remember that? Well, you can't break through. Yeah. I'm not going to sing it to you, but the kids used to enjoy it. I will make you fishers of men if you'll follow me. And uh, that's what Jesus wants, isn't it? He wants us to become fishers of men. Amen. These words were especially addressed to Peter. The warm-hearted and impulsive son of Jonas that's recorded in Luke chapter 5. The Lord addressed him as Simon, as the name Peter was reserved until later, after months after his discipleship um, was going to be uh, happening to him. They were engaged uh, in their occupation as fishermen. And it reminds me of David, King David. David was called from the sheepfolds, just like a shepherd boy, watching his father, father's sheep. And he became shepherd to a chosen race. It reminds me of Paul, who was made a tent out of goat's hair, when he was called to preach the gospel of God. The living water, that eternal spring, those springs that was revealed to the woman of Samaria, when she ran back to the village of Sica, the Samaritan woman who said, Come see a man who told me all things ever I did. Is this not the Christ? And uh, she ran back to the village. She had so many husbands. And Jesus mentioned their husbands. And he said, The man you're living with isn't your husband. And she said, Come see a man who told me all things ever I did. Is this not the Christ? And they came and they heard him. And many believed. Why did they believe? Not because of what she said, they said, because we've heard them, we've heard him for ourselves. Yes, amen. amen. The living water she received that day. Drink of the water of, of the well, Jacob's well, but if you drink the water I shall give you, you shall live forever. Amen. It reminds me of Isaiah. In Isaiah chapter 6, 1 to 8, having got time to read it all, but Isaiah was in the temple when he saw the Lord. And then um, he, he, he had such a wonderful experience, he says, Woe is me, I cry, I'm a man of unclean lips. I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the Lord Almighty. God spoke to me about his sin, and his unclean lips. And then God said, Your guilt is taken away, and your sin is atoned for. Then I heard a voice saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, this is Isaiah, here I am, Lord, send me. So to be commissioned by Jesus Christ to win the lost is one of the great commissions that we would ever have. To tell other people about Jesus and to see other people born again of that incorruptible seed of the word of God. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word which proceeds out of the mouth of God. Thank God for this, this holy book, the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. The denominations are wondering what they should do with same-sex marriage and stuff like that. And one denomination, a lot of the denominations. Church of England said we can't marry, we can't marry uh, uh, same-sex couples, but we will bless them. How can we bless the sins of Sodom? How can we bless the sins of Sodom? that God destroyed. Friends, you've got to keep to the word of God. Right. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. We need the word of God. We need to keep to the holy book, to the Bible, the inspired word of God. And Simon the fisherman was commissioned by the Lord Jesus. From now on, you will catch men. Pity are going to catch men alive for the kingdom of God. How many godly ministers, godly ministers, with good churches, 
surrounded by devoted people, the boat, the fishing tackle being the best. And they've watched, they've watched the success of the simple evangelist has lifted net those of fish from the depths of human life into his career. And that's what it's all about, friends, to win souls for Jesus. I believe in the prophetic ministry and I go along with all the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. But Jesus commissioned Peter not to be a prophet, it probably was one, but to win souls for Jesus. And that's his commission to us all. One excellent fisherman said, when you go fishing, keep yourself out of sight. We don't lift ourselves up, but we lift up Jesus. Successful soul winning is generally based on our consciousness of personal sinnership and our need of continual cleansing. And there are many illustrations that we could, we could use here. The Apostle Paul called himself the chief of sinners and the least of all saints. He was conscious of his nature and his reliance on God for forgiveness. He never forgot the pit from which he had been dug. I've been saved over 60 years as a, as a little lad of 15 in the street, in the shop doorway. I gave my heart to Jesus Christ, then introduced by, by a, a, a young fellow into the church among godly people, lovely godly people, just like you all here this morning. And I learned such a lot from them. Maybe not. I've changed a little bit, the women don't wear hats like they used to, <laughs> especially the conventions. You couldn't, you couldn't see the preacher for the feathers and the fur and the hats of the people. And uh, when I became a deacon in the church, before I became an elder and then a pastor, uh, and I was married, and the, my pastor said, tell Veronica to put a hat on. It's all changed now, hasn't it? When you think of Catherine Coleman, the evangelist, the American evangelist, never wore a hat. She's done long gowns and stuff like that. But the miracles that happened in her meetings are phenomenal, weren't they? Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. But you know, Wigglesworth as well, he, he said that I would rather see, I would rather see one person saved than to see 10,000 people healed. And he did see healings and he saw miracles. But he said, I'd rather see one person born again yes. of the Holy yes. Spirit. Than the thousand, ten thousand people he knows. Hallelujah. We've got to be conscious of our need if we're going to be used by God. You see, God can't use people who are puffed up with themselves. People who think they've arrived. People who think they're it. Thank God that I'm here in your church because I'm going to be such a blessing to you. God is going to use people like that. God's going to use people who are humble. And who are who are full of Jesus, yes. and they don't see in themselves anything good apart from the goodness of God. And there's a lot of good people who are not Christians, but we're not saved because of our goodness. And there's a lot of good people here. And maybe you're a good person here, but you need Jesus in your life. Do you know why? Because you're a sinner, and that's why Jesus died. Because He died for our sins according to the scriptures. He rose again for our justification and he's now at the right hand of the Father in heaven, making intercession for us. Do you believe that? Yes. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive and if Jesus Christ is not alive, I don't want to be here. I've got nothing to say. Jesus is alive. Yeah. And we've got to tell people that. We've got to realise our sinfulness and our continual need of forgiveness. Because we're sinners by nature. Hallelujah. We're sinners by habit. And we're sinners by choice. We all sin. And that's why Jesus came. He came to forgive us our sins and thank God for the cleansing of the precious blood of Jesus, which makes us clean inside and holy, and He sanctifies us. And he makes us holy in, in his name. But there's always, there's always that evil, sinful nature that's inside us. Prone to wonder, we used to say, prone to leave the God I love. Take my heart, Lord, and seal it, seal it from thy courts above. Prone to wonder, prone to wonder. We've got to keep an eye on ourselves. Because he let him who thinks that he starts take heed as he fall. 
Instead of pointing the finger at other people, we need to point the finger at ourselves and tell to say, Lord, it's me. Depart from me, O Lord, for I am a sinful man. The psalmist said in Psalm 121, I will look unto the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. When we see the plague of our own hearts, we'll be able to see the need of others and know how to lead them to Jesus. The Saviour who saves to the utmost, all those who come to God because he ever lives to make intercession for them. 1 Corinthians 1, 2 and 8, I think, describe us perfectly as people. Brothers, this is the Apostle Paul speaking to the church in Corinth. Brothers, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were of human standards, wise of human, as far as human standards are concerned. Not many were influential, not many of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to share the strong. He chose the lowly things of the world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are, so that no one will boast before him. The AV says that no flesh will glory in his presence. God will not give his glory to another. And you find in church history and in the Word of God that all those people who were used by God were nothing in them. They didn't think much of themselves anyway. Moses, he didn't think much of himself. At the age of 80, God says, go back and, and speak to Pharaoh. He says, oh, I can't go back. I'm not eloquent. He was brought up in, he was brought up in the school, a, a wonderful school in Egypt. He was eloquent all right. But you see, for 40 years, he learned to be somebody. And then for 40 years he learned to be nobody. And when he was 80, God said, I can use you now, son. And the bush burned. And God spoke out of the bush. Hallelujah. Thank God, thank God that, that God chooses us. We are sinners, saved by the grace of God. Hallelujah. And it says, therefore, as it is written, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. So we boast in Jesus. The evangelist cries from his heart. The evangelist cries from his heart. Who is able to deliver me from the body of this corruption? If God can save me, he can save you. Hallelujah. And consciousness continued in my need of forgiveness, in my need of, of, of following Jesus. Without him, without him, I'm lost. I need him every day of my life. I was converted when I was 15, a lot of years ago. But I need him with all of my heart every day of my life. Do you agree? Yes. Hallelujah. John Bunyan. John Bunyan's review of his condition is typical of many others. He wrote The Pilgrim's Progress and other good Christian books. John Bunyan. Um, he said this, this, he said, I feel loathsome in my own eyes. Now I don't think we should be kind of condemning ourselves all the time and, and grappling around on each side looking for all of our imperfections. I don't agree with all that stuff. I'm not trying to, to make you feel, oh, I should be looking all the time for sin and stuff. But when it appears, well, how do, we should know how to deal with it and live in the presence of God. I feel more loathsome in my own eyes, he said, than a toad. I thought I was so in God's eyes also. I could have changed my heart with anyone. I thought that man, but the devil himself, but equal with, with my inward wickedness and pollution of mine. I was both a burden and a terror to myself. How gladly I would have changed anything but my, I would have changed, I would be anything but myself. This, that was before I became Christian. Charles Wesley, the brother of John Wesley, said, I am vile and full of sins. Thank God for the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. Thank God for the peace of God that passes understanding and the guilt that's removed from us when we become Christians and we follow him. Hallelujah. Thank you for the washing. Thank God for the washing and regenerating power of the Holy Spirit, pointing us to the Saviour of our souls and the sacrifice he made for us on the cross. Simon, in Luke chapter 5, 4 to 5, we read it. Jesus said, put out into the deep water 
and let down your, your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and caught nothing, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. And when they had done so, they caught a great number of fish. Then their, their net began to break. So they signalled their partner on the other boat to come and help them with the, with the, the boat and the two boats began to sink with so many fish. But Simon Peter saw this, he fell down on his knees and he said, go away, go away from me Lord, go away from me Lord, for I'm a sinful man. It was in the presence of deity, the day he saw the power and the presence of God in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid, from now on you will catch men. We have to be conscious of our own sinfulness and our own need. And the pit from which we're being dug before we can warn other men of their need of a saviour and salvation. Why? Because we know what we were. We knew what we were like. We found forgiveness in Jesus Christ. Someone said, those who have had deep awareness of sin in their lives are better qualified to the tender and understanding of those who are needing salvation. The ring leader in the devil's army will make a better soldier for Christ than converted. Redeemed poachers or reclaimed poachers make better gamekeepers. That day when the boat left, it was master, but when the miracle happened, it was Lord. Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. Simon Peter was in the presence of deity. Failure and sin do not necessarily exclude us from divine partnership in soul winning. God has a lot to, had a lot to do in the life of Simon Peter. God had a lot to do in the life of John McHale and still has a lot to do in my life. But he who started a good work in you, Paul exhorts the church, he'll finish it. Do you believe that? Yes. He who started a good work in you, will finish it. Amen. Many illustrations could be used in the weaknesses of Simon the fisherman. Thank God for the cleansing and renewing of the Holy Spirit. And if you're feeling guilty, you're a Christian and you're bowed down with guilt and condemnation, remember this. There's one who died on your behalf. And there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who live according to the Spirit and not the flesh. Jesus has died and has risen again. And he's our, he's our, um, he makes intercession for us, isn't that right? I write unto you, children, that you sin not. But if any man sin, it's talking to the church, if any man sin, we have an advocate for the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is a propitiation, the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. Jesus died and has risen again. You don't have to feel bad about yourself all the time. Sometimes you don't feel good about yourself, but if you rejoice, rejoice in the Lord. And be thankful for what he's done for you, for what he's doing inside of you, and for where he's taken you to. Hallelujah. He's taken you to heaven. And one day we shall be with him in glory, and we shall see him as he is. Isn't that wonderful? Are you glad about that? Yes. I don't look so miserable then. Yes. Say, oh man, I'm <laughs> Pentecostal here. Hallelujah. I'm going to go to heaven one day. I want to see this in the heaven. Amen. Well, hallelujah for that. You get a little bit free this morning, that's good. I'm getting a little free as well. Praise God, that's good, isn't it? Hallelujah. God's got a lot to do in our lives. He's not finished with us yet. And if you think God's finished with you, and you've got to that, that place of sanctification, and that place where you're never going to fail, then you're deceiving yourself. You're deceiving yourself. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Follow him. Follow him. He's the one who says to the utmost, 
all those who come to God because He ever lives and He makes intercession for us. Hallelujah. So there are many, there are many illustrations we, we, we could, yeah, I could bring about Simon the fisherman. But in Psalm 130 it says, if, the, if, if you, Lord, should mark iniquities, O oh Lord, who should stand? But there is forgiveness with you that you should be feared. And yes, Simon, the son of Jonas, depart from me, O oh God, O oh Lord, for I am a sinful man. Jesus said to his disciples a little later, will you leave me? He had Simon tell them to leave, depart from me, Lord. And, but Jesus said, a little later on, when the 70 disciples left him, he said to his disciples, are you going to leave me as well? But Peter said to him, who can we turn to, for you have the words of eternal life. You can almost see him, Simon Peter, the board heaped with slippery silver cargo, falling at Jesus' feet, a strong man, torn with emotion, and maybe with sobs, I don't know. But then Jesus said, follow me, and I will make you to catch men. Soul winning, to be successful, must be the absorbing purpose of our lives. It cannot be an interest among many. They left all to follow him. Peter returned to his house to think it over, the marvel of the life that was opening up to him. The fire of God burned in his heart within him. Let's have a look at Peter's wife. Remember, Peter was a married man and probably had children. And Jesus said, leave all and follow me. Now, I've kind of, I want you to use your imagination here. Peter had a, had a mother-in-law whom Jesus healed, remember, the Bible? He had a, a, a lovely wife. This is Peter's wife. He's been, all, he's been out all night fishing, so she, prepa she prepared at breakfast. He hasn't come home yet. She goes to the seashore to look for him. She sees her husband leap into the shallow water and lifts Jesus from the boat to the beach. Peter approaches her lovingly with an unusual tenderness that maybe startles her a little bit. Can you spare me for a while? The master has asked me to go with him. He says that. I am to be afraid, for he will provide for us. He's promised to teach me to fish for men. I will come back to you soon, as I have learned, and I've learned my lesson. And he's done with me. In the meantime, I must be free to serve him. Can you spare me? This is a talk to his wife. Peter just did, Jesus didn't say, follow me, and it should have been, he just followed him. Of course he wouldn't do that. He did follow him, but he went home to see his wife first. And then she replies, Husband, go with him. Mother and I will survive somehow until you get back. Stay with him as long as he needs you. You were just saying this morning you've been a different man since he knew him. Amen. It reminds me of the scripture Peter said, Lord, we've given all to follow you. You've given everything. To follow you. And Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. No one who has left wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will receive will receive many times much more in the age that is to come up to eternal life. Peter's wife came to be a believer also and travelled everywhere with her husband helping him, as Paul bears witness in 1 Corinthians chapter 9:5. This is Paul speaking to the church in Corinth. Don't we have the right to take a believing wife along with us? As do the other apostles and the Lord's brother and Cephas, Peter. She went with him as well. Maybe not directly, but when he became an apostle and he, and he started to, to minister for the Lord, his wife was with him. Peter made many mistakes when he was with Jesus. Matthew chapter 16, 13, 17, Jesus said to his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? 
and see John the Baptist, and I see Elijah, and I see Jeremiah, or one of the prophets, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus replied, you are Simon, son of Jonas. For this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. But then a few verses later, Jesus predicts his death. Peter took him to one side and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, this will never happen to you. Then Jesus took to Peter and said, Out of my sight, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have the mind of things of God, but the things of man. Impulsive Peter. Then there's Peter's denial of Christ. Or men may forsake you, Lord, but not me, I'll never forsake you, Lord. And Jesus said before the cock crows, you deny me three times. But then he said, But Peter, I prayed for you. Isn't that wonderful? Peter, I prayed for you that your faith fails not. After you converted, strengthen your, bro your brothers. Hallelujah. Isn't it wonderful? Isn't Jesus a wonderful Saviour? Yes. Oh, hallelujah, friend. Jesus is with us wherever we go. Even when we are sinful, and I don't advocate us being sinful, but we fight against all that is sinful and evil and wrong as Christians. But because of our Adamic nature, that tendency, that inbred tendency to sin, we have to keep in the Word of God, friends. Pray, seek the Lord, walk with God. If you're baptized with the Holy Spirit, speak in the language of the Spirit, which will help you. After the crucifixion and the resurrection, Jesus reinstates Peter after Peter denied him three times. And he, when he realised what he had done, he, he wept bitterly. Have you ever wept bitterly as a Christian? Have you ever wept bitterly? Nothing wrong with that. If we're going to be anything in the kingdom of God, then he has to be Lord of our lives, every department of our lives. And if we've decided to follow Jesus, there's no turning back. Then many do turn back, won't they? I watch with interest people who have big names in Christendom and, and then all of a sudden you realise there's, there's lapse, there's failure, or there's something going on in their lives, or in their marriage, or in the church, or and have turned away from God. Friends, I'm an old fellow now, I'm 77. But I want to end right. That's right. That's right. I want to end right. Saved by the grace of God and kept by the power of God. Thank God for the mercy of God and the love of God and we need it, friends, in our lives. And after the crucifixion and resurrection, Jesus reinstates Peter. Peter, Simon Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. Then again, three times more. Peter, do you really love me? Do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, I love you. Feed my sheep, feed my lambs. Then, Peter, do you really love me? Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. You know that I love you. He made him a pastor. He made him an apostle. He made him an evangelist. <coughs> Hallelujah. If you look at the Acts of the Apostles, we see how Peter who works in the first probably seven, eight chapters of the Acts of the Apostles. It's all about Peter. And then Paul gets, he becomes a Christian. And then after that, it's Paul and Barnabas, and then Paul and Silas. And other apostles appear. But on the seashore that day, Peter said, before he saw Jesus, on the seashore he said, I'm going out fishing, maybe I'll have no money. I'm going out fishing. And the other disciples said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Not very good fishermen, were they really? They not caught very much. Uh, but early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore. But his disciples didn't realise it was Jesus. And he called out to, out to them, have you, have you any fish? No, they answered. 
Then Jesus said, throw out your net on the right side of the boat and you'll find some. And they did that and they were able to haul the net because there's such a large number of fish. In fact, there was 153 fish and they were big ones. What would they do with all that fish? Sell it, wouldn't they? They'd get some money to feed their families. Jesus was there with them. We had cooked breakfast for them. Hallelujah. Conclusion. Peter did catch fish. And he also caught people for the kingdom of God. And on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says, Gee, Peter stood up with the eleven and he preached the word of God. He preached the gospel. He was attracted by the tongues speaking the different languages. And the believers were filled with the 120 were filled with the Holy Spirit. But Peter stood up with the eleven and he preached the gospel. And, and people, 3,000 people were converted. He became a fisher of men. <coughs> Peter raised the dead. The Dorcas was at Tabitha. He went in and he put everybody out of the room and he prayed for this dead woman, Dorcas, and she came back to life again. And at the gate, beautiful, the man who was lame, when Peter and John were, were going towards the temple to the gate, beautiful, there was a man begging. He was asking for the, 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 these are arms. He was asking for money, arms. They've got legs. <laughs> And he jumped up and he said, silver and gold, this is what Peter said, silver and gold have I known, but such as I give are you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he jumped up and he started leaping and dancing and praising God. Hallelujah. Peter was used by God with the other disciples. The house of Cornelius, we call the Gentiles Pentecost. And Peter went into a Gentile home and, and God had appeared to him and given a vision of unclean animals and said, eat. And he said, I'm not going to eat, I haven't eaten any pigs and stuff. And he said, I'm Jewish. Oh. And God said, what I've made clean, you don't make unclean. What I've made clean, don't make unclean. Something like that. And, God, and then came from this man Cornelius, the Roman centurion, who was visited by an angel, sent for Peter this the praise, praise, sent for Peter and Peter came and, and there was a great gathering in the house and as Peter preached the Holy Spirit fell on them and they started to speak in tongues and Peter said that's what happened to us on the day of Pentecost it's happened to the Gentiles as well the middle wall of partition had been broken down there's neither Jew or Gentile, male or female, bond or free. We're all one in Christ Jesus, Paul is saying. And Peter preached, and people were born again, and filled with the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 4, 13, and then he finished. And when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were uneducated, common men, they were astonished and recognised that they'd been with Jesus. Their secret was... I've been with Jesus. And if you're going to do anything for God, if you're going to do anything for God, get out of the way. Let Him use you. Let God use you. If you want to be a soul winner, if you want to be great in the kingdom of God, learn to be servant of all. That's what Jesus said He was. I haven't come to, to be served, but to serve. Be servant of all. And as we follow Jesus Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ, it, it, it's important that we receive the Pentecostal baptism of the Holy Spirit and receive the passion for the lost, for the lost souls of men. That's in your boast, and guys, you keep a list of them in the front of your Bible. Not this one, got lots of Bibles for 60 odd years. Some became pastors. Friend Colin Cooper, he, he's retired now, but he became pastor of a church in Huddersfield with over a thousand people. There was a little lad of Geordie lad, and they gave him the tracks out when they had the open air meetings. And this fella came and said, We have one of these. He said, Oh, he said, I'm a Protestant. He 
You know, Jesus died for Protestants, and Catholics died for everybody, didn't he? They've arranged with the meeting the following Sunday night, came along to the church, they heard the preacher and made no response. I was sitting next to this young fellow, probably could be about 18, 17, 18. So I'm going to the disco, go to disco is. Some of you do. Disco tent. I'm going to the disco. I said, you can't until you get saved, until you're born again. Can I pray with you? He said, yes. I led him to Jesus. And you know what happened? The night he got out of the church, that night, when he realised what he had done, he jumped in the air with excitement because Jesus had come into his life. Hallelujah. Unless the Lord is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And it's Jesus who does the saving. We get people to say sinners' prayers and put their hands up and stuff like that. That's good. But Jesus had made disciples. And he became a disciple. He came back to the church. And he came, was going to chill up. Is that right? It's good to all the word. Isn't it? Chill the pasta. It's going to push the pasta. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you love the pasta? It's the pasta of Tim. Hallelujah. And he became a man of God. We're bringing many, he's bringing many sons unto glory. The captain, the captain of our salvation. He's bringing many sons unto glory. Maybe this morning you've never received Jesus as your saviour. Or you come to church and maybe you put your hand up and you said a prayer. But there's no change in your life. You see when Christ comes into your life, there's a change. All things are passed away and behold all things become new. <coughs> and a man is born again. We're born from above. We have a new ex we have an experience of sin is forgiven. It's not just feeling good or feeling, well, it's nice being here. It's having a changed life and having an experience with God and loving Jesus Christ with all your heart. Yes, amen. 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 That's what it's all about. Loving Jesus. Hallelujah. We make you a fisher of men as well. There are giants to fight, there are battles to be fought and won, but we long, we long to see him honoured and loved and exalted. We shall desire that he shall see the travail of his soul and be satisfied. We shall have, the, we shall have his interests at heart with no backward look at ourselves. The Holy Spirit will fan the embers of our heart into a flame. The bruised reed will he not break. The smouldering flax will he not quench until he brings victory, judgment, and then victory. Friend, you might feel down today. You say, if God's going to use anybody, not be me. I'll tell you something, friend, he can use you. Give everything to him. Give everything to him. And he will use it for his glory. Jesus is the true lover of souls. Hallelujah. <laughs> Matthew, I'm finished now. Go to all the world, Jesus said, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them everything I've commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Peter, who by the love of Christ was qualified to feed his sheep and lambs. Let us pray that we will follow the Lord, each one of us, and be used by him to become partners with Christ and his great passion for men and women's souls. We hear a lot about what God's going to do in Northumberland. And if God's going to do anything in Northumberland, it's going to be salvation of the lost. Do you believe that? Yes. Salvation. It's not just having meetings where you're having all the... You know, I love all that. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I want the real thing. Yeah. I want the real thing. Not just be full of emotion and screaming and laughing and barking and yelling and... And that was part of Toronto's stuff. Yeah. And I've been flat on the back and laughing. But it's, but it's more than that. Yeah. It's 
more than that. It's when you're lost. And Peter got out the about you, even the shadow of Peter, people were healed. They weren't healed because of his shadow, by the way, they were healed because of faith they had to be healed. We need to see healings. We need to see the miraculous. We need to see it. It's important. We need to see people born again. It's my passion. See people born again. So, friends, I'm finished now, but it's like the 12 o'clock. Praise God. It's okay, dear. 12 o'clock, and I'm done. It's going to be a wedding cake now, aren't it? Glory to God. Wherever I go, wherever, wherever situation I'm in, I want to tell people about Jesus. Have you lost your passion? I think it was Suzette Hatton who worked, who worked for, um, was it Ray Hall Bonkey, wasn't it? Suzette? Yeah. And I was going to make a wedding cake for her as well, but she's not married yet. Um, she said, if you've lost your love for the lost, you've lost your love for Jesus. If you've lost your love for the lost, you've lost your love for Jesus. I want to live with more than you. Yes. You want to live with more? Yes. I do. Yeah. I want to live with more. I want to live with all of my heart. I tell them on the morning when I wake up, Lord, I love you. When I walk around the metro centre, I'll die to you and free coffee. I love you, Jesus. <laughs> Glory to God. I love the gypsy people, the travellers and gypsies. And uh, one, one guy phoned me during the week. He said, John, I talked like that. Well, John, he said, he said, I've known you all my life, haven't I, John? I said, yes. And he, was, he said, would you pray for it? My son's having problems. I said, I'll pray for him. Call him Rocky. I'll pray for Rocky. And for his other cousin who was in trouble. <coughs> Hallelujah. Let's love one another, friends. Let's care for each other passionately. Let's do good for each other. And when people come, to you, come into the church, make them welcome. There's nothing wrong having these lovely little choruses where you want to clap your hands. Wherever I go, I'm praising and you start to dance a little bit. Oh man, it's lovely. I love it. I love to praise the Lord. I love to rejoice in the God of my salvation. I love to enter his courts with thanksgiving in my heart and praise. That's what we have to do. And I think he enjoys it when we clap our hands in the end of Victoria. And we say praise the Lord. And we rejoice in the God of our salvation. Hey, well, I've spoken too much now, have I? Let's pray. Let's pray. Every one of us. Friends, if if you've never received Jesus as your Saviour and Lord. And this morning you would like to have an experience, an experience with Jesus, then he's going to do it. We can pray with you. I'll pray for you. But you must be born again. You must have a new life in Christ. If there's anybody here this morning and you've never done that, you're not sure of your salvation. You want to be absolutely sure. You want to be a different person. You're sick of yourself. They're like Peter, depart from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man, sinful woman. Jesus did. Jesus. Jesus loved him. He loved Peter. And Peter loved Jesus. Will you give your heart to Jesus this morning? Room for business, room for pleasure, but for Christ the crucified. Not a place that he can enter in your heart for which he died. Have any room for Jesus this morning? Will you receive him as your Lord and Saviour? If you would like to, would you say this little prayer after me? Quietly in your heart. Lord Jesus Christ, I come to you. Sinner, I thank you that you died on the cross for my sins. I thank you that you loved me so much. You died for me. Come into my life, Lord. Change my life. And give me your salvation. 
Thank you for hearing my prayer. Help me to follow you from this moment on and for the rest of my life. Amen. Just give prayer. Did anyone say that in a prayer? Anyone at all? And they're really sincere. If you stood your hand up and take it down, I'll say, God bless you. Anyone at all? God bless you. Take your hand down. Anyone else? You said that little prayer. You really meant it. And today you're going to follow Jesus for the rest of your life. Put, put your hand up and take it down. I'll say, God bless you. Anyone else? Thank God for what? Thank God. Take your hand up and take that. That's three people. Anybody else? You said that prayer and you really meant it. Anyone else? God bless you. That's four people. Anyone else? You said that prayer. Hallelujah. Four people this morning have responded to the message of salvation. Hallelujah. Isn't he wonderful? Oh, hallelujah. Jesus is wonderful, friends. Lord, I thank you for these dear ones who've said that prayer, those who've raised their hand, those who haven't raised their hand and have said the prayer. I pray even today, right now, Lord, you become real to them, Lord. They'll have a real experience of you. They'll come to know and love you and follow you. But Lord, bless them today. Bless them, Lord. Help them to go on with you. Lord, strength to strength. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm going to have a little book called Journey into Life. It's in the bar there. Oh, I've got a box over there. Um, you people who raise your hands, I'd like to give you one of these booklets and just say hello to you. And, uh, and I will be praying for you. We will be praying for you as a church fellowship here. So that's wonderful. Praise God. Well, are you glad you're saved? Yes. 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 Amen. I'm finished. <laughs>